Now you can go really fast with it. Okay, you continue that until you get around to the string again. Then you tie another flat knot, and you continue doing that until you get six mesh out. That's a mesh right there. From knot to knot across the open space, or a square. One square is a mesh. Okay, continue that until you get six meshes deep. Six mesh deep makes a good crab net. This is going to be the last row on this net before we put it in the bow. So I move my peg out a notch, turn the net over, and I'm ready to go. I've got about 20, 24, 25 to tie. It'll take me three or four minutes to do it. This doesn't take long, really. When I get down to about half, we'll go real slow with it, just as a refresher. When you make a small, smaller mesh net, two and a half or two inch, it takes more loops around the ring than it does with the larger mesh. And the fewer loops that you have, the smaller the circumference of your net on the outside. I'm just about halfway there now, so I'm going to slow down here in just a minute and finish up the last uh, eight or ten very, very slow. Okay, pick up the next one that I'm going to do. Here. Tight. Hold it right there. Lift it off. And that knot's called a sheet bend. And if you don't know that by now, you're probably not going to remember it. So we'll go real slow here. Okay. Got to pull a little more net around. We got about five or six more to go. Uh, it'll only take a minute or so. This is the quickest way to make a net. I think I showed you earlier another way to feed the string up and just in case you've forgotten it you brush up on it put that up through there and hold it pull it down snug and hold it and i lift it off and put the shuttle up and then i pick up the string and lay it around the loop that may be a little easier to remember but it's it's slower than, than doing it by laying the string out across your wrist, like this. Okay, well, there's the string that I started with, so I've reached the end of my neck. Now, this rubber band, by the way, is to hold the needle. Just, just some place to put it. Now I'm ready to tie these two together and finish up the neck. I want to tie that knot so that it's close down to one of the other knots so that it doesn't get in the way when I go to lace the net in. Now this is nothing more than a square knot. I'm gonna pull it down tight, and then I'm gonna put a half knot on top of that to lock it. That'll make sure that that square knot does not slip. And I do the same thing here. Just tie a half knot on top of it, and pull it down tight. Next, I'll cut these two strings off about a quarter of an inch out from the knot, and we'll be ready to go ahead and put the net into a bow. Okay, that we'll do next. Now, we're going to load the net needle an entirely different way 
because we're going to lace a net into a bow and handle. I start with about 35 to 40 feet of string and double it. It's somewhere between 35 and 40 feet long. And I have it doubled, and there's the center. The center of the string I'm going to put over the springy tine of the net needle, like that. And then I'm going to hold it like that so that my little finger comes between the strands. That's just to keep them straight as I load them onto the load the string onto the needle. And I'm going to fill the needle exactly the same way we've always done. Back and forth, all the way. This is 35 to 40 feet of string. And it's doubled. And the center is attached to the needle first. Just in case you don't have enough, it's easy to tie a square knot into that center. Okay, there's my needle finished. Now we're ready to lace the crab net in. Now we're going to lace the net that I just finished into this bow. I'm going to take the needle. I'm going to tie the end of this string back here three or four inches from the handle. And I tie a clove hitch in that. But I'm going to untie it a little later on. Then I find a knot that I've tied where I ended my string. Now the only reason for doing this is I think it looks a little bit better if you have the knot on the back end of your net. There it is. There's the knot where I finished. Now I'm going to move over one mesh from that so that it's one mesh, the knot is one mesh closer to me than the first mesh that I'm going to use. Okay, and then the net, the string, net needle, comes up through that mesh. And with my thumb and forefinger, I hold that just like I did when I was making the net. Down about an inch and a half from the bow. Lay the string out around my hand and come up behind the two strands that I'm holding. And I tie a sheet bend there. That's exactly the same knot that you used when you made the net, right? Now I'll pick up the next mesh around, which incidentally is the one that has the knot in it. And that puts the knot back here, close to the handle, all the way in the back of the net. And I get about a half a mesh here. That's down, that, that's down about a half a mesh from the bow. And hold it between thumb and forefinger Lay the string out and come up behind it. I usually stick a finger and something down here to hold it and then pull it tight. The next one comes around the bow. Pick up the next mesh. And do exactly the same thing. Now you'll probably be able to see it a little easier when I get a little further around. And this takes the same amount of time that it did to make one row of mesh. About four minutes, something like that. But I have a double strand of string holding the net in. I painted this with a little bit of aluminum to make it easier to see. Normally it would be the blue or green, and against the grass it's a little hard to see, so I painted it aluminum to give you a better 